Amma mi, ayo mi, modu kwe lo wo lo honu to fi fu mi, yeah You are a blessing, yeah, yeah. not a lesson yeah, yeah. I can wait for you to call me daddy Dilu mi dun, ayo mi kun I feel so lucky that I got you Inu mi dun, ayo mi kun I feel so blessed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to our program Parenting. This is a series of uh, programs where we've been talking on parenting. We've been talking about the developmental stages of children and how to bring up our children so that they can turn out to be the best Muslims we can ever have. And through the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our dua, we pray that our children may grant us Jannah, may help us get into Jannah by them doing dua for us after we are gone and by their good deeds. So today we are going to go back and look at what did we do last week, what did, last time, what did we talk about. The last episode, I remember we talked about children who are going through problems or troubled children. And we discussed children who are going through divorce. We talked about children who have gone through neglect. We talked about children who have lost their parents and uh, we we looked at how we can uh, work with these children how we can cushion them from the effects of these things and how we can help them transition through all these problems and how we as parents have a very big role in ensuring that our children can negotiate through these problems in life and i remember last time i touched on children who are going through bereavement children who have lost a parent or uh, either a mother or a father. And I did not go into details about this. I touched on it. And there are certain questions that came out which I thought I would bring them out and highlight them out. And the thing is, what are we supposed to do when we have bad news? How do we break bad news to children? And uh, especially when they are very young or we feel maybe that they are not supposed to get this kind of information. It is important to know that when a parent dies, a child who has been living with that parent is very aware that this parent is not present. They can look around and not see the parent. So when we withhold the information, are we helping these children? No, we are not. So can we break bad news to children? Yes, we can break bad news to children. It all depends on how do we break this news to them? How do we explain it to them? And how do we bring it to their level for them to understand that this person has died and they might, they might never see this person again. So it is very important that if a parent has died, that we sit down with this child and the person sitting down with this child should be somebody who looks calm, somebody who the child trusts. And at that point, we have to try our level best to be as calm as we can so that this child cannot start reading beyond what they can see. So if I'm not calm, the child thinks things are very, very bad because children will always magnify what they see. So we need to be very calm as we break this uh, information. Then how do we bring it? We look at their ages. If they're at an age where like maybe they are eight years or even less, we talk about it at their level. If they are six years, we will talk about mom has gone and we might not be seeing her again. She has gone to Allah. Allah has taken mom. So they will maybe want to know what does that mean. And you explain that mom has gone to be with Allah. Allah has called mom. So we will not be seeing her again. But we can do dua for her. And mommy still loves us. And mommy still loves you wherever she is. So we are still bringing the aspect that mommy still loves them. We go to an older age, they might want to know what happened. Maybe they are 10, what has happened? If it's an accident, we can bring it out very calmly. There has been an accident. Mom was in the accident or dad was involved in the accident and he got injured and Allah called him to be with him. So why are we bringing in Allah called him? Because they will want to know why is my parents leaving me when I need them most. So we need to explain to them that the parents did not just decide to go. The parent 
has been called by Allah and we explain to them that when somebody has been called they have to go and that where they are we are the ones now going to be doing dua for them and then we bring in calmness by telling them that we are there for them and it will be okay and whatever emotion they want to express if they want to cry we let them cry if they want to just be quiet we let them be we offer them the support we can by being there for them and letting them react in the way they want to react if they want to cry we allow them to cry even if they are boys we don't tell them men don't cry there's always this uh, cultural thing where we try and make boys act like men when they are still very young so let them cry it is their right this is their parent they are going to miss this parent and the most important thing is how do we break this information and to their level if they are teenagers we can still explain it to them at their level they might want more details especially when they are older what happened how did it happen what is happening now you can tell them now we have done this we are bringing the body to this place or this is what we are doing let them know exactly what is going on and bring them on board when they see us acting secretive they get very worried so it is very important that this news is broken to them at their level very young children don't need those finer details but the older ones might need more details then we usually have this tendency to move children they have just lost a mother why should they lose a father they've lost a mother and then we pluck them and take them to another town and then they are living with strangers somebody they were not used to or somebody they never lived with we decide for them that now they are going to live with their auntie who lives uh, in Machakos maybe and they were living in Nairobi so all of a sudden everything changes for them so it is very important that we try and have gradual change let's not change everything for them all of a sudden let us not make children lose both parents at the same time when it has not happened that way if the mother is the one who has died the father should still be in their lives that gives them a sense of comfort especially if this father was in their lives then the house they were living in they are used to that children who are going through bereavement do not like a lot of change then let us have routine the routine they were used to let us try and maintain that routine remember the neighborhood they were living they have friends so when we pluck them it's like they lose everything they lose what is familiar their home they lose the parent that they are living that they were living with they lose uh, the friends they are used to playing with they lose the friends at school so they lose like everything at a go so we, that has a bigger impact on them so what do we try and do we try and minimize the impact of the death on these children by trying to bring as much normalcy as we can into their lives so it is very important that as we are dealing with children going through bereavement all this is done and done in a way that is very gradual so that these children can slowly slowly go through it if the child is not getting through the grief if they look like they are getting into a depression then we might seek help and that's when we look for professional help and then in school it's important to let the teachers know what is happening and the teachers also can talk to this child at her level and also validate the child's feelings whatever feeling the child is having should be validated and the child should be helped to express that feeling so that it doesn't get stuck so inshallah any time that we are having a death in the family let us know how to break this information let us know how to work with these children and help them express their emotion so today we want to look at adolescents or children who are getting into adolescence and we notice a change of behavior where we start thinking that maybe they could be using something like a substance when i talk of a substance i think for every parent that is our greatest fear no parent wants their child to become a drug addict no parent wants their child to be an alcohol addict so do our children actually get to be addicts yes they do and why did we start with children going through problems children going through problems like we said the last time are also more likely to be the children who might want to engage in substance use so we as parents 
how do we start noticing? What are the changes that we will see in our children that can be something for us to get worried about? I know we could go into a denial where we think, no, my child cannot do that. I have never had a drug problem. Why would my child have a drug problem? We have never had a drug problem in our family. Why would my child be the first one to have a drug problem? So we need to come to the agreement that actually children are actually getting into drugs, they're getting into substance. We see them in the clinic, they come, they are sent in by schools. The parents also notice changes in their children and they do come and express the changes they are seeing. So this is a reality that we are living with, something that we need to take control of, something that we can nip in the bud early and the earlier that we can deal with it, the better the results could be. So uh, we are going for a short break. As we are going for this short break, I want us to think about what are the drugs that we currently know in the market or we even have heard about as we come back and we talk about these drugs and our children. Thank you. So we'll see you after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope you are back from the break. You are seated. You are listening to our program, Parenting. And today we are talking about children who are uh, using any substance of addiction. And uh, we had discussed earlier that it is usually children that maybe have gone through some form of problem. Others, it could just be a peer pressure. Others, it could be that they were trying something out and then they just got addicted. So what are these signs of some, a child maybe who is using any form of substance? One, we know our children very well, especially if we have been very present in their lives. When there is any change, when we start noticing they are not the same person, something is just not right, we have a gut feeling, then we need to look at that gut feeling. Why are we feeling like this? Why have we, are we having these thoughts? What is different? This is the time now we start asking ourselves questions. When we see something is not adding up, and then we need to find out what is it that is making us feel that something is not right. The first thing we need to do is to start having some investigation. Let us start maybe walking into their room. It is okay to walk into that room. At times we feel that we are invading their privacy. But if we are invading their privacy for the right thing, then that is okay. So we need to go into their room maybe when they are not there. We need to go through everything in the room, the cupboards. We are looking for anything like an evidence to show us that are we on the right track? Are our suspicions grounded? And maybe we might pick certain things. We might pick maybe even the item. If it is a uh, marijuana, we could pick uh, uh, the marijuana. If it is mira, we could pick some of the leaves. If it is any other drug, we could pick something. And at times for something like marijuana, it could even be the covers for things like uh, Kit Kat, which somebody can use to roll and smoke with. It could be even a spoon or even a syringe, something that we didn't expect to find in that room. So we should actually do an inspection. And these inspections should be just spot on without any pre earlier like warning that I'm going to check your room. Then we can also go through their social media, look at what they are posting what is it they are writing in their social media sites which social media sites are they visiting who are they talking to on social media and then also we can also look at their friends do they have new friends that uh, we didn't know about before are they having a new group of friends that they don't seem to want to introduce to us do they have friends that we don't feel comfortable with and then are they becoming more sneaky? Are they hiding stuff? Are they like trying to avoid having conversations with you? So you, when you're looking at all this, we are trying actually to build up a case. What, am I, what I'm seeing, is it having evidence? Is it leading to what I think it is? And then we start looking at them now critically. Because when these children are either using this substance, we are going to notice changes in them. These changes could be a behavior, behavior change, could be mood change, could be changes in their personality and also in their physical appearance. 
So these are things that we might maybe be overlooking. But now because we are having this gut feeling that something is not right, we have our suspicion. Now we start looking in more keenly. So we start looking. If it is their behavior, how are they behaving? Are they acting their normal selves? Are they more aggressive? Are they more likely to be louder than their usual selves? Are they hiding certain things? Are they acting sneaky? Like they don't want to talk to you about certain things and when you try to talk to them, they have an excuse. Are they coming up with many, many stories about where they are going? And every time you're trying to find out, they don't want. And if you keep insisting, they might even tell you, you are invading my privacy. You are not becoming too much. You're, you're not minding your business. You're interfering too much with me. And they look like they're getting very agitated and angry. Somebody who is using a substance, they usually get very agitated. And in the morning, when they wake up is when they look more agitated and more jittery. And then maybe as the day goes on, like by, time, by the time it is evening, they might be looking more calmer. So you're noticing a change in behavior that cannot be explained, that has not been there before. So it's very important that we start noting such behaviors. They become more clumsy, like they could break things in the house without like having, like they are holding something and it could be falling down, or they are hitting themselves on the chairs, or they are even tripping over yet that behavior has not been there before then we look at their physical how are they presenting they start looking like they have blood short eyes at times their eyes look like they are heavy lidded and if somebody is uh, smoking uh, marijuana their pupils are more dilated like their eyes look like they are more dilated as opposed to these other drugs where their pupils might not be looking as dilated they might look more constricted. So there are times when the pupils will look more constricted and times when they look more dilated. So with marijuana, usually they, they look more dilated. Then this uh, person, they have like a runny nose. They keep having like a runny nose, like you see them the whole time they are touching their nose. And they are having a lot of fatigue, looking very tired the whole time. And then having poor appetite. For other substance, most of the time they have poor appetite, they don't eat, they could even have weight loss because even the money that maybe they're supposed to eat with for lunch, maybe they are going to college or they're going to school, they might have to spend it on something else so they might not be eating their lunch, they might not be eating well. And at times for marijuana they have an improved appetite, they can eat food meant for three people. So when you're seeing a change even in their eating habits, you be keen on what kind of change is it? Is it they are losing their appetite or is it that they are overeating? Their sleeping pattern, are they losing, like they're not sleeping on time or they are oversleeping? So which one are you noticing? If they are oversleeping, why are they oversleeping? Are they taking a substance that makes them black out? And you notice that when they sleep, they black out completely. Even if you are to wake them up, they will not wake up. Or is it a substance that keeps them awake? Because you could have something that is a stimulant and you could have something that is a depressant. So which one is it that maybe somebody could be using? It's very important to look into all that. Are they acting secretive? Like they seem to be hiding stuff. They seem to be hiding things. They are not themselves. They are not comfortable. When they are with you, they look fidgety and they are nervous. You need to find out why are they behaving this way. Fishy stories like... They'll tell you maybe you had sent them somewhere and they delay. Why are you late? And they tell you a story that just does not seem to add up. And every time you are questioning about their whereabouts or uh, anything that pertains to their behavior, you're getting a fishy story. If you see new injuries that were not there, if somebody is using like a syringe, you might see prick points on their arms or any part of their body. Are you seeing anything that is not making sense and anytime you ask what what is going on you get a story that is fishy that is not adding adding up so you as a parent you're looking at all that in school how are they behaving are you getting complaints from the teachers Do, are they answering the teachers back are they aggressive did they hit anybody at school 
Are you getting lots and lots of complaints from their school and also their grades? When somebody is using something like a substance, the grades just start sliding and going down and progressively keep going lower and lower and lower. So at times we are wondering, why, am I, why is my child not performing well? Why is my child having problems at school? Why do I being, keep being called at school because my child is having problems? So when we start seeing all these behaviors adding up, we are now starting to see there's something not right and we need to keep looking at what is happening. Poor hygiene. Somebody who was very smart, who cared about how they dress, they no longer care about how they are dressed. They no longer care about how clean whatever they are wearing is. Their room is looking untidy when before maybe you'd find it looking a bit tidy. I know at times uh, young people might not be so tidy, but there is something that you will notice that is not the norm, that they are more untidy than usual. Maybe they don't even want to take a bath, like you have to insist, why don't you get into the bathroom? When that starts happening for somebody who would take their bath, was taking care of themselves, had good grooming, then that's points of concern for us. And if they are having memory problems, like you're, they're trying, you're talking to them and you notice they're trying to recall and they're taking time to think. Uh, like yesterday when I was, and they keep quiet and you can see they're actually struggling to recall. It's time to ask why are they having problems with their with their memory, what is happening and what is not happening. So all these are things that we are looking at. And why are we looking at all this? We are looking at it because they are all pointing to something beyond the normal, something like they could be using a substance. So once we get to a point where now we are feeling there is something, there's something and there is need for this to be addressed, we need to sit down with this young person. We need to have a candid talk and ask them openly like what is happening i have noticed this 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 and this and even as you've been doing this investigation you also should have uh, tried to smell them to see if there's any awkward smell that you're getting that is not a normal kind of smell and you've also noticed that maybe even the behavior is like what we have talked about totally missing and are there any items missing in the house is any money missing? Does money keep missing around the house? At times we have the tendency to think uh, the house help took our money or somebody else sneaked in and took the money. But if we've noticed all the things I've explained and then we are also noticing money is missing, now it is time to have a candid talk. And when we are having this candid talk, what do we want? We want to find out what is happening if they are using a substance, what substance is it they are using? And now we need to seek help. And when we say we need to seek help, it is very important that at this point we know we need to help this person. Addiction is an illness. Addiction is a disease of the mind. It needs more than us for it to get well. So we are not going to say we are going to talk them out of it. We cannot talk them out of it. This is a disease and we need professional help at that point. So this is the time that we need to have them assessed. We take them to a professional, a psychologist or a psychiatrist. We get them assessed and then we go through what is the next step. How far gone are they? How much help do they need so that they can kick this habit? So we don't panic. We remind ourselves that there's help out there, but we need to seek this help. And this is a disease, we cannot talk them out of it. So don't delude yourself by saying, I'll get in people who will talk to him. I will uh, have somebody who will talk to him. Talking is to help them now get to understand that they have a problem and they need help. So when we say we are talking, we are actually bringing them to the awareness that they have a problem and that they need help. So it is very important at that point that we seek the right professional help and we don't panic and we help them kick this habit. And the Eid Nilba, with lots of dua, with a lot of patience, we can help these children and work with them to kick the habit. So until next time, this is Riziki from Hidaya Timeless and welcome back to the program Parenting next time and we'll keep answering the questions that come up as we go. Barakallah. Amami, ayami, 
Modupe love, love, no to fi for me, yeah. You are a blessing, yeah, yeah. not a lesson. Yeah, yeah. I can wait for you to call me daddy. Do me do, why you me go? I feel so lucky that I got you. Inu me do, why you me go?